Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of Northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we bring back a classic visit with an extraordinary artist who didn't let a little physical handicap stand in the way of pursuing his love of art. Terry Metzke of Alpina overcame diabetic retinopathy to create award-winning wood carvings and paintings. We're sorry to report to you that Terry passed away earlier this year, but his work remains as a testimony and inspiration to thousands of aspiring artists. Then on the show, our geocaching guru, head hard hat Andy Smith, has some tips for you aspiring geocaching. It's all coming up on Michigan Magazine. Hale Hardware, your do-it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. There's adventures around every turn, and if you're looking for something for you and the entire family, be sure and visit the Cedar Valley Golf Course and the Wild Frontier Fun Park on Weaver Road in Cummins. Play 18 holes of world-class golf at the beautifully maintained golf course, Cedar Valley, tucked away amongst the hardwoods of northern Michigan, and at the same time, let others in the family enjoy themselves at the adjacent Wild Frontier Fun Park with carnival rides, a batting cage, bumper cars, and a 19-hole mini golf course. Check them out online. It's a northern Michigan destination. He's a true Michigan inspiration, artist Terry Matsky of Alpina. Despite failing eyesight, Terry continues to carve wonderful slices of Michigan outdoors. The beauty of our state and its wildlife is what keeps calling him to develop his artistry, which in turn is an inspiration to others. Well, there you have it, a beautiful rendition of the chickadee. Many people are thinking about making this the Michigan State bird, but you never know. The robin is, uh, has got seniority and it always will probably. But anyway, it's almost like it will hop off the, the uh, stand here and go into flight and uh, do its little dance it does in the winter time. We're with Terry Metke of Alpina. Terry, you are the carver of this item yes, here. Yes, I am. <laughs> and thank you for allowing us into your uh, home studio, a combination here. And you do wonderful work. How long have you been carving like this, Terry? Almost 20 years. 20 years. Tell us about the progress, how you got into it, and uh, how you developed your skill. Yeah, it's kind of a strange story. I started carving when I was off work for six months, learn, uh, trying to save my eyesight. Uh huh. Yeah. And I just started carving on big things because that's all I could see at the time. And it just mm -hmm. kind of developed over the years. About f four years ago, I got in with the Thunder Bay Wood Carvers. And there, in a group with everybody that does the same thing, you pick up on the other people's talents and mm -hmm. learn a lot more. So what, 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 I know you do more than wood carving. You also do paintings. Yeah. But what got you into the wood carving? What was the inspiration? Uh, always when I was a kid. I always had a jackknife. Uh -huh. You're walking in the woods, you pick up a piece of wood, and whether you just carved a little design in it or when it's sitting on a uh, deer blind, take a piece of scrap wood and carve something out of it while you're sitting there waiting for a deer to come out. Uh -huh. Just, you know, I just always had a fascination with trying to make something out of wood. And this area of the state is, is not lacking in wildlife or no. inspiration, yeah. is it? Is something to look at, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that you had a little eye problem. Was that uh, something serious? Or? Diabetic retinopathy, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. That's, at, at, at times, I've lost the sight in both eyes. I only mm -hmm. have the eye sight in the right, in the left left eye right now. I'm totally mm -hmm. blind in the right eye. Mm -hmm. But you have the vision to create such beautiful items like yeah. this. And you mentioned the Thunder Bay uh, Carvers. Yeah. Uh, a group like that is pretty supportive. I mean, would you suggest that that is something that uh, was really inspirational in your life as far as... Yeah, it helped out, that? yeah, because you, uh, the carving over there, this one part? of the guys, the, the links there. Okay. One of the guys in the carving club entered that in the competition down at the Oscoda Carving Show mm -hmm. on me. I just sent it down to show, and one of the guys entered it, and it took a second place ribbon. Oh, wonderful. And I never thought I had the talent to compete uh -huh. with the people that had, you know, good eyesight, so. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. And you get a lot of good feedback, too, as far as uh, inspiration from other people and uh, that you learn from people. Right. Yeah, everybody's business. got their own idea. If you've got a problem with something, you ask how somebody else has done it, and they uh, come back with their idea or how they would do it, and it always gives you somewhere to start at least or a different mm -hmm. way to approach yeah. doing it. I like the way you approach this and put the whole kind of a, a whole scene into the situation. Yeah, they like himself. to do that, to have not just a lot of carvers, just have basically a piece of wood on right. the base with, mm -hmm. with the wood attached to it, and I kind of like to make something a natural uh, setting. Uh -huh. Is this something that you saw yourself in the wild or in no, your mind's just, eye? Just, just in my mind's yeah. eye. Yeah. Just, just kind of come out of, just kind of built it as I was going. Oh, wonderful. And you're working on a fish, too, I see, working this morning. A rainbow trout. A rainbow trout, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you've had experience in catching some of those, or is that in your mind's yeah, eye, too? No, I, I actually <laughs> caught one this size at one time years ago with my dad fishing up in the UP. Oh. The river. Uh-huh. And it's just something, uh, one, of the, one of the guys in the carving club gave a class on carving half a bluegill in the last spring. Oh. And it just kind of developed into carving whole fish, and... There seem to, people seem to have a liking for the fish. There's so many people fish around here that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's something that... Is this uh, more or less, is this one piece of wood or is this... Sections? This right now is one piece of wood. Mm -hmm. The side fins, the two up here and the two down here will be attached later. I see. Those will come out of a piece of wood like this. Okay. Which, well, not that, but this, mm -hmm. this here will become a side fin later on. Mm -hmm. So it would, these are some of the basic tools that you uh, yeah, begin with? Yeah, nice. I do pretty much all my work. About the only thing I use a power tool on is I use a little bit to hollow out the mouth in here because I'll mm -hmm. put tongue in there later too. Mm -hmm. Open hey, mouth. Pretty sharp tools, I bet. I yeah. noticed a Band-Aid on your yeah. thumb. But <laughs> <laughs> they seem to cut through whatever gets in the way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's take a little bit from the raw stage here. I see here you've got a couple of things. Uh, this is pretty much what your, your carvings do start out like, yep, aren't they? Yeah, just a block of wood, yeah. Okay. So that, that's what this was not too long ago. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. this, what kind of wood is this? Uh, that's wood. Is that a pretty good wood to uh, work with as far yeah, as Yeah, it's a, it's a nice, it's a pretty durable for holding up into shape after you get it done, but it also is, is a fairly easy carving wood. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of rough it out in a situation like right. this? Is that what it is? Kind of get cutting, sometimes two-dimensional, get get this cutting profile so you get a lot less cutting to do. Mm -hmm. so when I started carving wood, I didn't have anybody cut out so I'd start from this form and mm -hmm. spend a lot of the time just getting it down to that shape. Mm -hmm. And the detail is really, I think it's really wonderful that you do into the birds and things of this sort. Where do you get, uh, uh, is it from pictures or do you get skins? Yeah, or? Uh, some of the different magazines I've gotten. I've gotten Birders World magazine. Mm -hmm. It's a big help. Oh, that is wonderful. Real, yeah, colors to get into true to life colors. Yes, and I, I'm also impressed by the spoons here that you have. Now, what got you into this and the carving of the detail of these spoons? I uh, just seen some that somebody else did wow. one time down at the Escoda Carving Show, and so he's got to try that. Mm -hmm. uh, is this doing? Basswood too? Or? Yeah. Wow. That's basswood. I want to try and do one out of butternut later. It's mm -hmm. going to be your grain. Hey, what, wait, is this bass too? Or uh, that's jelly tongue. That's a different wood. That's one, a one of the guys in the carving club um, gets that wood. He worked at a factory and it was shipping crates. Oh, really? So it gets recycled. Really? That is great. And you get most of your wood from uh, just uh, where? Just local lumber friends companies around or? here, yeah. Mm -hmm. just, uh, sometimes you get somebody cuts a tree down the down in the yard or something and basswood isn't a real good firewood uh-huh so uh, a lot of guys will donate it you know give it to you is this the same as this type of wood or yeah okay. yeah just a darker stain just a darker stain on it boy incredible work here if you lose yourself in your carving i bet I mean, you do you yeah. do you do all you lose all your daily daily problems it's a good way to relax and not think about what's going on in the world all right you come home you get done you know working on this and you look at the clock and it's 11 o'clock 11 30 at night already and it's like wow <laughs> where's the time go <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite type of wood to carve is it basswood or do you uh, have a... yeah i guess basswood mm -hmm. uh-huh and the, the any dreams as far as what would you like to carve i mean any uh, dreams of uh, perhaps the ultimate carving that you or is that still in the I, no i just you know? yeah you just kind of go you, you see what somebody else has been doing or you just see an idea somewhere uh hummingbird one time i just happened to see a picture in a book of uh Hummingbird sitting in his nest, and I made the made the leaves for the tree, and, and made the little nest, and put a hummingbird in it. Uh, oh my goodness! Now that there, that's the leaves I make. You make these leaves too? Yeah. How those do you are made out of a grocery bag. Oh really? With a uh, floral wire in the middle. Oh no so kidding! Together and then paint them. Where do you get these ideas and tips? Uh, that was one of the lady in the craft store had a had a rough idea on that, but she was doing it a little bit different way, and it's just something that I developed. Uh huh. 
Wonderful work. And are you also into painting? I see you have a love for lighthouses too. Yeah, I just um, seen Bob Fagan from downstate, oh, yeah. watercolor right. artist, right. going around the state doing lighthouses. Well, okay. when I started looking around, I didn't realize there were so many lighthouses so close. Mm -hmm. You know, I did, didn't realize, I knew there was always a Presque Isle lighthouse here, but right. then, you know, and I just started doing the same thing, go, go on site, do a sketch of it, and then uh, take some pictures and take jot down some colors and come home and do the painting of it. My goodness, and now you are at probably the best location for lighthouses in the state because and there is, there's so many, lighthouse right, you're right here in town, yeah, so you yeah. go there and get ideas and see what other people are doing. There's right. so many local subjects around. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's amazing that how many people are into lighthouses now. Yeah, yeah. And the history, it's just... Yeah, to hear the stories of uh, all the guys oh, that actually work yeah. there. <laughs> Any future of maybe uh, carving a lighthouse out of wood? Or, uh, or I don't know, yeah, the carving of one. Uh, I, I've seen one of, one of the guys, Howard Lottie, in the carving club uh, carved one one time, and we used it for the top of a friendship cane, but mm -hmm. there's only so much you can do. It doesn't look, lighthouse. yeah, yeah. yeah. So as far as your, your artistry and uh, your watercolor, any uh, any uh, area you'll be going into? Are you going to be pretty... Uh, you don't know. Just, really? yeah, I don't know. I guess yeah. trying to find, see if there's something else that I'd want to change, you know, from the lighthouses. I like mm -hmm. doing the lighthouses just as now they're all getting further away because I've caught everything from Tawas Point up to Mackinac on this side of the state and I got quite a few on the other side. I got around Traverse area and... Um, Charlevoix area on the other side of the state so now it's a matter of being able to travel the distances to get mm -hmm. any more. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go past the thumb area to get down in the thumb area to get any down on this side of the state or else go up in the UP which there they're spread out quite a bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and usually got to do quite a bit of hiking to get out on the beaches to get to them up there. Yeah. Most yeah. of them are pretty. Oh well, it strikes you I know you don't do just lighthouses you do wildlife and everything. Well when you see something that you want to plant is there something that, that hits you, you that you'd like to get that done do you do any sketching before? A lot of there? times I like to do an on-site sketching mm -hmm. get it there and take some notes yeah. and then take some photographs like this I get the photographs so you got something some of the first paintings uh the lighthouse first lighthouse painting was Mackinac there I bought a postcard while I was up there okay and uh the then I got to where I started taking pictures on site after I did the sketch yeah yeah a lot of these bring back a lot of memories to Michigan Mike see we've been through <laughs> quite a few of these and you know it just kind of takes you back Terry it's been a pleasure to come out here to Alpena to discover another artist here that we have that is inspired by the Great Lakes. Terry, keep up the great work and thanks okay, again thank for you. sharing your world with us. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Welcome to Geo Snippets for Michigan Magazine Television. I'm Head Hard Hat. In the next few minutes, we're going to give you some interesting information and tidbits about the game, the sport, yes, the obsession, known as geocaching. Well in today's episode we decided to just go geocaching. The sky's blue, the sun's out, the birds are singing. It's time to just go out and find some geocaches just cause. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Let's start now. Now one of the things about looking for a micro in an area like this is it literally can be anywhere. So it could be in loose bricks, it can be in tops of fences, it could be anywhere. This particular one is right here. A 35 millimeter micro geocache. We're gonna sign the log and move on.
Okay, I can see the geocache from here. This is basically a big root hole. Take a look and see what it looks like. Thing that you always want to do anytime before you just reach in, always poke the area with a stick. That way you have a less of a chance. Oh, look at this. Oh, man. Look what happened here. This is what happens when you use a cheap plastic container for a geocache. It's filled with water. What a shame. Okay, so let's take a look at this geocache. Again, depending on the environment that you have for your geocaches, you got to be careful of water. This is a cheap plastic uh, container, and it is literally, oh, look at that. Oh, we're going to have to clean this out. I mean, the log book is goo. The swag is all nasty. This is what happens when you don't use a proper geocache container. We're going to try to dry this up. I've got my emergency repair kit. We're going to replace the log and then uh, try to put this back so that the water doesn't get into it as much. What a shame. Okay, we're at the next geocache, and this one's really cool. Check this out. Here's a rope tied to the tree, and it goes up. It's going to end up hitting us. How cool is that? Geocache has put in all that extra effort as far as uh, putting the geocache. This is cast iron, so this is good and heavy. Really nicely done. I'm going to loosen this, this up. up. A brand new geocache, too. This is nice. Here's a logbook, some assorted swag, and all up. Even check this out. Travel bug, very cool. One of my signature swag items I like to trade are first aid kits. Miss Geoness wants this. We'll trade up. Okay, so let's quickly go over what we learned today. We learned that it's fun going geocaching just on the spur of the moment. Make sure you have the right supplies with you, of course, but just going out finding five or six geocaches can be really rewarding. Like say, for example, today where we ran into that one geocache that was hung up in a tree and then those fawn were just a couple of feet away from us. What an amazing shot. Well, folks, it's time to go. This is Head Hard Hat for Geo Snippets and Michigan Magazine Television saying we hope to see you out on the trails real soon. Bye-bye, folks. The Cedar Tavern and Grill of Lockton, where friends come to meet friends and families come for delicious food and a wholesome atmosphere. Come relax with your favorite beverage or bring the crew for a great meal and live entertainment. It's happening now at the Cedar of Lockton. Hingeman Acres Canoe Livery and Resort on M33 just north of Mayo. Catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Thanks for joining us on this autumn day in Michigan. It's a beautiful time to get up and get out to explore the bountiful harvest accented by a backdrop of wonderful, breathtaking colors. Don't forget to check out all the great fall events throughout the state by going to michigan.org. Type in your zip code. It'll tell you exactly what's going on in your neighborhood. You can also sign up for the latest Michigan travel guide for free sent directly to your mailbox anywhere in the country. Have a wonderful week and try and make it a pure Michigan one. We'll see you next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts.
Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Flu season, be prepared. Get your immunizations now at Rose City Drug, your one-stop pharmacy, home health care, and medical supply outlet. Offering a variety of on-site immunizations. Walk-ins are of course welcome. Call now for more information. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com. Yeah.